ideal gas law. In this video, we're going to use the relationships that we previously discussed combined into one gas law. We'll use this to solve for unknown variables given the rest of them. These are going to start pretty simple, but they can get really, really complex, much more so than I'm going to show you in this video. It's often one piece to a much larger problem, um, and so make sure that you review the online videos if you need to. Now that we have all the individual relationships, we can combine them into one equation. If we put P and V on one side in order to keep everything in the numerator, and N and T on the other side, we'd get this. Notice I keep the proportional signs. However, because they are actually always proportional to each other, they are proportional given a particular ratio. So as long as we recognize that there needs to be a ratio, or there needs to be some number to relate them to each other, we can get an equation. And this is where the ideal gas law comes from, and the ideal gas law constant comes from. By using the constant, we can say that PV is equal to nRT, an equation that most of you already have memorized by now from high school. Now, we can use this equation to do pretty much all of Boyle's, Charles, and Avogadro's law problems by deciding what is constant and what is canceling each other out. Before we move on with doing that, though, let's think about what our units of pressure, volume, and temperature must be in. Something that may seem simple now, but gets more confusing as you go on in chemistry, is the units for this. So let's take a special note of the units for R and what that means about anything you are going to fill into the ideal gas law. Because this is a ratio of quantity with units, R is going to have the units of those variables. As chemists, we tend to report R in terms of liters, atmospheres, kelvins, and moles. This is the 0.0821 number that so many of you may even have stuck in your memory from using it so much in high school. But what does this number mean about the units that must be used if you want to use the ideal gas law? For anything that you fill R into, you must use the units of liters, atmospheres, kelvins, and moles. There will be some problems later on where instead of using the one-point version of the ideal gas law, we will use the two-point version. But these cases, we won't use R. And you can be a bit more lazy with units. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But if you are using R, you must use the units above. Now let's do a couple examples using this equation. We must first solve for P. We divide V on both sides and then fill in all of the values. You were given moles and liters, and so you, and those are in the correct units, but for temperature, we're going to need to convert to Kelvin. Once you fill all of these values in, you can fill into your calculator to get the answer. We fill in our 1.82 moles. We fill in our ideal gas law constant. We fill in our temperature while adding it to 273 to convert it into Kelvin. And we divide by our 5.43 liters. This gives us a final pressure of 9.42 atmospheres. Let's do another example. Take a second and try this on your own before continuing the video. In this case, we must first solve for the V. We can divide P on both sides in order to get this new equation. We can then fill in all of your values. You are given moles and liters, so those are in the correct units. But once again, for temperature, you're going to have to convert. We fill our 2.12 value in. We fill in our ideal gas constant. We fill in our temperature while adding it to 273 to do the conversion and we divide by the 6.54 pressure. From here, we get our answer, which is 9.29 liters. In review, we have an equation that combines all of the gas laws into one. We call this the ideal gas law, and it is related by the ideal gas law constant, R, which is typically reported in liters, atmospheres, Kelvin, and moles. In future videos, we'll start getting into more complex problem solving and the two-point version of this formula.